5.51 a.m. Look. So dark out. I think Mr. Sun's a little bit late today, huh? But anyway, I was editing yesterday's vlog and then I cut to an old footage of me which I saw that my face from back then was a round mound of rebound which made me realize that my journey from who I was before that fat, lazy, I don't know what else you want to call it version of me into who I am now I'm in my prime shape I think it's the healthiest I've ever been that whole journey took a while and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I wanted to talk to you about the physical things that I do every single day that got me here to where I am. So I normally start my day with a little bit of meditation, a little bit of breath work, and a whole lot of gratitude. Because, you know, there's a whole lot of things to be thankful for in life, man. So the first really physical thing that I do almost every single day is run. I run like the wind blows. But I can run like the wind blows. From that day on, if I was going somewhere, I was running. So here we go. We are running. So I just do it straight out of the gate. No stretching, no warm up. It's not any health advice, but something you gotta just do. My biggest secret with running is breath work. I normally breathe with my mouth closed, nose only. But right now, I'm trying to talk to you is very difficult. I don't know how I'll go about with this. We're a kilometer in, and this is my favorite part because your body gets through the initial shock of starting a run is starting to adjust, start to get into a flow. But considering that I'm mouth breathing, couldn't get proper flow for my breath work, I think running with this is a bad idea. Two kilometers in, at a 418 pace. Not too shabby, huh? I made up this route specifically to avoid traffic in general. So we're three kilometers in. So I find it hilarious going through this part of the track because I spend most of my weekends here. So I take it back. I don't run and exercise every day. Maybe five to six times a week. Because my man GSP, something to say about that. One of the rule in life, if you want to maintain a good health, is that when you do something bad, like drinking, partying, you do a lot, but a little bit. And when you do something good, like taking good care of your body or training, do a little bit, but a lot, more like a routine. Remember that. So taking it easy on this relatively flat part of the track, because in about a hundred meters, I'm about to hit the biggest incline of this track. Hitting the biggest uphill climb of this track, I normally shut up, but right now, this is just special for you. I'm gonna go through this, mouth open, talking, but still pushing, still fucking pushing. We're almost at the top. Let's see how you do there we go. Now we're in Greenway Park, we're just Greenway. This is probably the easiest section. It's hard to put down here. It's there's kids, there are dogs, people. So try to be careful when you're running here. Workout completed. Time 23 minutes, 27 seconds. Distance 5.03 kilometers. Average pace 440 per kilometer. So running was a pandemic pickup born out of the need to exercise. When the pandemic hit, I was forced to find something that would work for me. But I think we should really backtrack into how I decided to become physically fit and healthier. So I was a really healthy kid growing up. I took up a lot of sports and that went on all throughout college. But then in 2015, 
I lived in the States for a little bit and then I picked up this junk food habit and I started growing from there and when 2016 hit, I just basically let it all go and it all went downhill from there. I became fat and in 2016, I moved to Panama and it just got worse from there because I had a hard time adjusting to Panamanian food and I basically ate a lot of fast food, a lot of junk food. In Panama, no one really played basketball. I did a little bit of running, a bit a bit of running, but that wasn't like how I'd run today. From there, I ballooned to about 205 pounds. And in 2018, I moved back to the Philippines and I was fat, I was very overweight and out of shape. And I was working one time and you know, back in those days, pre-pandemic, shoots would last up to 24 hours or more. And I was in this 27 hour shoot. And I was a smoker then too. And I came home out of breath and I felt like I was dying. I had myself checked the next day and my blood pressure was too high. And the doctor said that you should probably make life changing decisions for yourself because you might end up taking maintenance medication. So right now, this is me, and this is my maintenance medication, running, exercise. So I think a 5K at the pace I just ran is just the perfect distance and intensity for me to do it almost every day. I don't know where I picked this up, but I think it was Faraz Sahabi that said that consistency over intensity. When I heard that quote, it basically affirmed what I was doing for the past few years because, you know, I run for the sake of running, and I don't run to compete. A lot of people have been inviting me to run a marathon. And I know that's nice, but you know, training for ultra endurance events like that is very damaging to the body. And for me, I'm training for longevity. I try to avoid injuries. And when you train for something like that, injury risk is very high, but that's just me. I'm not here to share any physical fitness advice. I'm not a sports guru or something like that but I'm just here to share what has been working for me for the past few years. So it's 9 a.m. and I just got to the gym. So I try to do running and strength training every day because you know I need to build up my cardio and at the same time retain my muscle mass and bone density. So today is hit day, high intensity interval training. And I'll typically do a lot of sprints, a lot of, you know, hip workouts. And after the health scare, I decided to make major lifestyle changes. I decided to quit smoking and I started to take up intermittent fasting and started to go to the gym. And then the pandemic hit. And I took that as an opportunity to work on myself. I started to run every day in the morning. And when the indoor gym started opening up, one of the first ones was the UFC gym. And I started to take up striking. I was lifting a lot more. And during these times, I was feeling all the positive benefits in my body. And I started to get really addicted to it. The thing though is that regardless of what I was doing physically, I was being consistent at doing something every single day. And really what has helped me throughout this journey was just consistency. Just being there, just showing up. I was never like this before, but then for some reason, I managed to find consistency in my life through this. So by 10 a.m., I'm done with the most difficult parts of my day. I'm done with running, I'm done with going to the gym, and everything else will be easy from here on out. I forgot about the sauna. The most difficult part of my day is the sauna, and that's late in the evening. I'm, I'm gonna talk to you about that later too. So it's 5.30 p.m. and I just got off work. I just got back home. So typically on a regular day, I do all my strength and all my cardio work in the morning. And then in the afternoons, if I have time or if I'm not working, I'd go for skilled sports. So this time it's jiu-jitsu, but sometimes I play basketball. Sometimes I do striking. Frankly, jiu-jitsu is something very new to me. I just picked it up this year. Unlike most sports that I've taken up before, Jiu-Jitsu is completely skill-based. It's not based on athleticism, it's not based on explosiveness. And it's very interesting to me and it's something that I really want to get good at. You know, Joe Rogan describes it as high-level problem solving with dire physical consequences. <laughs> so I'm almost at the gym now and I'm just mentally preparing myself to get mauled by smaller people or just completely dominated and crushed by bigger people. And <laughs> doesn't sound like fun, but it is so much fun. 
So I just got off jiu-jitsu class, feeling like a freshly squeezed lemon, but that's all part of the learning process of it. And it's all good. So I didn't take videos at all because no one was even taking phone videos even, so I didn't want to be the stupid new guy who's taking vlogs inside the jiu-jitsu mat. And I just wanted to be respectful of the culture and respectful of everybody's time in there. Anyway, I'm almost home and it's down to the last physical activity that I do for the day. So the last physical thing that I do before recalling it a day is hit the sauna. But I have to be honest, this is my least favorite part of the day because I'm just gonna basically go through hell. So what I do is I crank it all the way to its maximum and wait for maybe about 15, 20 minutes until it hits 70 degrees. So despite the hell that I'm about to experience, there's so much health benefits to a sauna. Studies show that if you hit the sauna 47 times a week, you get a 40% risk reduction in all-cause mortality. That is significant, majorly significant. There's a myriad other benefits to the sauna. From the top of my head, there's improved blood circulation, stress reduction, detoxification, pain relief, stress relief. There's so much more to that. And I try to hit the sauna every day, but the real numbers are maybe five times a week. And that is enough for me to get all the benefits that I mentioned. So the sauna's hit 70 degrees. It's time to get in and go through hell. So that was literally fucking hell that I just went to. And I wanted to get you as soon as I got out because I wanted to capture you in all my delirious form because it's a mix of you get delirious and accomplished at the same time. Delirious because you just went through a moment when every inch of your body wants to be a bitch and just get out but accomplished because you out hustled your inner bitch you're stronger than your inner bitch I'm stronger than my inner bitch fuck my inner bitch the worst part of it is that it's an uncontrolled sauna so I went in at 70 degrees and the longer you stay the hotter it gets progressively so came in at 20 minutes went out at about 85 90 degrees and it was so hot already by the time I went out like the trick with saunas is that you control your breathing but on the 15th to 19th minute when you breathe through your nose your nostrils feel like they're burning if you breathe through your mouth your throat feels like it's burning so I'm just walking around recovering appreciating the cool January breeze especially after going through hell. But that's pretty much my day. That's pretty much all the physical things I do every day. And that's the thing that has helped me most, it's consistency, doing it every single day. I picked all of these up during the pandemic and I've added layers upon layers upon them through the years. And thankfully all of these have stuck with me. And through that consistency, it has brought me to this right now it's brought me to the best shape of my life right now i've never felt stronger i've never felt more fit i've never felt healthier all throughout my life and like i said when i was a kid i was always around sports i played basketball growing up but today right now it's the healthiest that i've ever felt in my life but like i said earlier you're not going to get any physical advice from me because everyone has their own boat to float and what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. So rather my advice would be to just find your own path. Find out what works for you. Find out what you like doing and stay consistent in doing that. Because if you're trying to be healthier, I think it's a lifestyle change. It's something that you have to integrate into your life. It's not just a six month program. You lose weight and then end up gaining all of that back or Get your physical health in order and then end up losing it again if you're just being inconsistent. So that's just my advice, just stay consistent. Otherwise, I'm no health guru, I'm just a dumb.